Ready, guys, what is going on? Corbin, Corbin's Cornhole Reviews. Got Peanut hanging out with me today. And we have Eddie from Cornhole Bag Reviews. What are we doing? Front board and four baggers, episode three. Uh, we are doing the Typhoon, the Deadhead, and different shot types today. So I'm going to let Eddie start it out with the Typhoon, get into the stats, and how you feel about those. Sure. So the Typhoon um, just came out. It's the Surefire from Reynolds. Uh, it's, they, they use the same material, slightly different fill, but they call it a five, 8.5 speed, which I think we can agree is more accurate than the four, seven that Surefire says. I think it plays like oh, a five, 8.5, um, yep. the materials on the slow and the fast are the same. So you got that game changer polyester material on the fast side and you got that Surefire black water. I mean, how many other bags at this point use this slow side? We'll even get into the deadheads using it too, but, um, they got an asymmetrical bead, uh, fill, which is slightly, it's a slightly different fill than the surefire fairly close, but you can tell a difference when you hold it enough. Uh, price points, obviously the big, um, change between surefire and this is it's 55 bucks plus shipping on Reynolds website. And, but it's right now a 10 to 14 day business day wait because they're getting blown up because everyone wants to try them. And so you're finding them for like 65, 70 bucks on Facebook, other sites like Norris Splat and blackjack also have them for that 65, 70 buck price range. But again, very affordable for these materials and for the, you know, bag it's mocking per se. So my you opinion, yours on you. Yeah. So, okay. Reynolds Typhoons. Perfect. So you've seen you've seen the designs. There are so many companies, and Reynolds does so much with customs too. I'm sure we're going to be seeing so many different designs coming out at this point because it's not like a Surefire where you have to take their designs from a Surefire. You know, you get to kind of. There's a lot of companies getting them and whatnot. And uh, high peanut. <laughs> she's, she's waving at she's me. Got to get her hand in there. She oh, was. Yeah. Um, so my opinion on them, I think they're awesome. I mean, I've thrown a Surefire. I, they break in just like a Surefire. They're very floppy, so you have to enjoy a floppier bag. I know some people said that they're from. If you order from Reynolds, you can in additional comments ask for more fill. And some people have been liking having a little bit more fill, so it doesn't get super super floppy. Uh, they do flop up a lot, and uh, and in my review, I mean, Corbin have talked about this plenty. I didn't use any conditioner or products on it. I literally just soaked and tumbled and they're already like full, full flop. So, I mean, I, I think use any conditioner or stuff on this, you, you could wreck them really easily. I think um, you're going to. And, uh, but I, I like them a lot. I think they're very hole friendly. I think that little bit beadier fill, they go in the hole really nice for me. The fast side is crazy fast. Uh, it plays like a game changer because it's the same material, so it plays well in humidity. Um, I, I really like it, and everyone I've shown to around this area that's a big Surefire person can't tell the difference, and they really like mm -hmm. them. So, like for the price point right now, it's if you want to try a Surefire, and because they're so popular right now, it gives you a really good option to try it. And I think once the Surefire players can get past the mental barrier of it's not a Surefire, so it's not a Surefire, yeah. and you start to yeah. really feel the both and try them, try them, try them. They are the same yep. in my opinion. So um, what do I you think about them? I, I like them. It's not going to be a bag that fits my rotation. Uh, and this is literally the one reason is because these are brand new. I've thrown them, <laughs> I think literally shoot three or four down and backs. And I'm not exaggerating that at all. <laughs> yeah. Yours are worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is literally brand new like brand new. I did not treat them. I didn't even tumble them. Mm -hmm. I did nothing with these. I took them out and threw them a couple of times. Like that would be okay. I'd be okay with that. But I mean, but you know, it's going to get to where mine's at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Crazy. the fact that I can hold it like that <laughs> is just ridiculous to me. Um, that being said, high quality, mm -hmm. it does not feel like any other Reynolds I've ever thrown. hundred percent. Yep. They feel, and maybe this is just me. I mean, they match the template of like, you know, we're doing deadheads. I got one of those sitting here. They match the template of a deadhead. I want to say they're almost a little bigger than a Surefire. To me, it kind of feels like, I mean, I haven't totally not broken inside of Surefires I could grab, but that's not really going to do much for you. But they just feel a little wider, like a little wider, a little flatter. And it's not a problem. It's just the size of the bag. It's not a small feeling bag. It's not like you grab a BG and you're like, ooh. Mm -hmm. that's smaller in my hand these are a little more a little bigger but it's not bad speeds are on point i mean they're going to be very useful in a fast environment but in a slower humid environment if you're forced to use that fast side you're kind of in trouble you well, know and you'd rather use a different stick. bag i mean why not take out a different bag and that's like what it Costello comes down to or, and that's yeah. Yep. You know, last night I actually threw Costello's over Blackwater's because it was just a little sticky and they mm -hmm. weren't moving, you know? So same idea with this. If you're going to throw this, well, 
might grab a pro sniper instead or whatever else you prefer to throw, you know, mm. uh, they're not a bad bag by any means. I think Reynolds actually really did a really good job with these. Mm. I'm not a huge fan of everyone copying surefires. <laughs> That's, yeah. I mean, I you mean, can understand why they're doing it. It's a it. super, super popular bag. Yeah. I totally understand. And I'm actually glad that Reynolds themselves did it. You know, other companies, cool, whatever, but Reynolds that's known for just carpet or, you know, they like pro excels, which aren't really carpet, mm-hmm. but they pretty much are. And you got the wonderful freedoms. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> we don't have to talk about freedoms or demons or patriots yeah. or no, no, no. Don't those forget about liberty. They got pro advantage, no, man. They got the pro advantage. Okay. <laughs> well, when you think of Reynolds, you think pro advantage, pro X, yeah. you know, you think of possibly pro Excel, but like the victory, not bad. You know, the pro AV, they came out with, they try to change stuff up. I kind of mm-hmm. like what they're doing lately. They're switching it up. They're listening to their consumer base and trying to make something that works. I think they knocked it out of the park, especially with prices. And you know, like customs from Reynolds are pretty quick and, mm-hmm. and affordable what, five or 10 bucks yeah. more than mm-hmm. their normal bags, you know? So I like them. Honestly, I really do. I, uh, I might throw them over some other variants of a surefire. I'd, I'd probably throw these over a surefire itself. Yeah, no, I, I, so. I, I've thrown them both next to each other, and I do like these a little bit more. I'm in the same yep. boat as you in terms of like, what conditions is this bag really take advantage of? I mean, yes, when it's fast, but then like, I find like the humidity when it's low. I throw these, and the slow side is like pretty fast like almost too fast and then the fast side is like unusably fast it's unplayable yeah. and then and then when it starts to get a little sticky you have like this 30 minute window where it's like perfect and then all of a sudden you're like oh now i'm hanging up um Done. yeah and and a caveat too of when you're saying it's a little bit bigger so i i don't know if that's maybe like a lucky you know quality control thing but i, I have pictures of the measurements that they're the exact same width and maybe this is just the ones that i had but i could totally understand like the feel of it and who knows i mean i know you were saying like yeah it's just a hand feel yeah midnight surefires i know you said we're a little bit fuller so i mean like who knows the the limit is usually a little fuller it just depends but it's with with the extra fill i mean if i would have known that i would have ordered direct from reynolds and waited two weeks you know i got this from a distributor on the Mm -hmm. facebook pages he had them in stock shipped next day yep so, I mean, getting a surefire basically in three days, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But I would love to try one. Extra fill, I yeah. Gone I'd love to it. try one with extra fill. I mean, obviously not, there's not a lot of people that have these yet or really around me that have had them or done reviews of mm-hmm. them or talked about them. So like going into it, I'm not going to order it with extra fill because I want to see what the bag is meant to be. Of course, um, yep. but to but to, yeah, to that I would be interested to see what this would be like if it stayed a little bit more like a Costello, a little bit tighter, like less over my hand, a little for a I little longer. I think it'd longer. play more like a Blackwater, like just a little more full. Yeah, you know, more of the fuller Surefire feel. Mm-hmm. I think it would play just like that, and they still are super hole friendly. They still do what you want yeah. them to. It's just a little better hand feel. Agreed. Um, but overall, I, I I agree with you. What you said I think it's really cool that they're kind of branching out of their little box they were in, and mm-hmm. uh, and what I said in my review I think holds true in terms of not that they weren't on the map; they'll always be on the map, but they're less talked about always. lately because of like all these other brands coming out, and this kind of really made Reynolds be talked about again, uh, mm-hmm. which which has got to been great for not only this bag but all their bags like people are like oh man this bag's really, really well how's this bag or you know and people that have been around for a long time know the pro advantage but if you're coming in now no one's really buying and selling pro advantages on the facebook page so getting people Not on usual. that site again and asking questions is going to be great for them and and i think they did a really good job with this bag so absolutely um we'll move on to the deadhead so i have a deadhead mm-hmm. here i love the design of the deadhead to be fair i think it's one of my favorite okay that design's cooler you have the peanut design, but the default deadhead design, I think is one of the coolest looking design. I just think it's, it's they, they knock the art out of the park. Um, they do. And their colorways that they're coming out, like the pickle colorway is freaking so cool. Yeah. I love the pickle yeah, colorway. Yeah, colors are very cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how they uh, categorize it as speed is a 5.9. Um, I, in my review that I did of this, I put it against a Typhoon on both the slow and the fast side on, on your board lift test they're the exact same. And uh, Mm -hmm. the reason for that is the material of the back is the Surefire, Typhoon, Blackwater, everybody material. And the front side is the Pro Sniper material, which if you listen to our last podcast about materials, the Pro Sniper material is the Surefire, Typhoon material flipped around. So Mm -hmm. it makes sense that it's 
basically the same speed because very it's very close. Same, very close. Yeah, same material. Mm-hmm. But the caveat to that, and well, let me finish the stats first. It's a disc fill similar to Black Sheep, that little bigger disc. It's not as small of a disc as the Pro Sniper Surefire, um, which I like this fill the most. It's my favorite fill. Um, and then price wise, if you can catch a release, 110 bucks plus shipping on the website. But right now on Facebook, they're super hot. So you're looking at like 130 to 150, 160, somewhere in there, depending on the yeah. colorway and kind of yep. what you're looking for. You can also find some non stamped deadheads for a little less, like a hundred bucks, I think it's even more sometimes. And, yep. uh, and so, I mean, it's the same bag. It just doesn't have to stamp on it. So that might yep. be a different option. So, um, why don't you start with, I know you released a little like kind of pseudo review, but you're having a fuller one coming, but what's your opinions on this? One? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do a full one of these. Uh, you know, I just, Kai had to review them. Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know, she had to throw her bags and break my stuff. So I like them. Uh, I mean, my one qualm with a deadhead or and it's not really necessarily a deadhead. It's just the price point that Buffalo did uh, since they got stamped. And I, I support Buffalo here on out. I love them as a company. I love their reps. I love the owners. They're awesome, awesome people. And I, I don't want it to sound negative at all. I just think their price point's a little high for what they're giving. Um, I mean, you're in the same token. You're in the same bar as uh, Lucky Bags. I mean, they're surefire prices, essentially, right? Yep. Um, even like the St. Michael's surefires were like what 150, I think, mm-hmm. on release. No, but one, that was part of it. I think it was only 130 or something. Might have been 135. It was yeah. like 150 shift, I think. Oh, okay. But those are going to, you know, some of that's going to charity, mm-hmm. right? Sorry. Um, custom deadheads are 150 bucks. Ask me how I know because I just ordered some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it is what it is. It's you're paying for a really nice bag. I don't think they break down quite as badly as a typhoon or a surefire or something like that. Agreed. Cause I've played with these quite a bit more than the typhoons and they're not even close to as floppy. Mm. They have that better feel. And that's probably because of the fill. That's probably the larger disc that it's feeling. Yeah. See, yours aren't even as, but I mean, that's, that's still floppy, but these materials are going to do that. You have yeah, surefire no, slow with a pro sniper or a surefire fast. They're going to be flat. It's just the way it is. But, uh, their graphics, like you mentioned, killed it. They always do. I mean, it's, if you guys haven't seen these, I don't know who hasn't, but the peanut deadheads, they sent these for my daughter. And they're so cool. I mean, they're ridiculous. They're I mean, so cool. Just peanuts with crowns everywhere. If they're you, awesome. Yeah. If you designed that, it wouldn't have been cooler. <laughs> like, I, I like, could never like you couldn't have close to a cool that. design, no. dude. Like, it's so cool. It's It was just, it's unreal, you know, and they have a crazy good design team over at Buffalo, but the bag itself, I mean, they they play really nice. I played with the set yesterday at a blind draw. A guy actually had your set, the blue set, really nicely broken in. They play great, man. Mm-hmm. They really do. Um, I think it'd be tough to pick between typhoons and deadheads. Mm-hmm. Like hand feel, playability. I mean, it's really a toss up. I mean, they're all really good bags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if so, I was to talk about, I mean. For me personally, I think the hand fill of the deadheads better just because I'm biased about the fill. Like that, I'm mm-hmm. like we were literally yeah, talking it makes today. A huge difference. Yeah, though. we were talking today. You it called really me does. like a fill a fill nut or something. Like I I just like to me I it's the fill man. Called, yeah. it, it's a uh, nerd. Or, yeah, uh, I used slightly more inappropriate. Yeah, that's right. I that's why I said anatomy. That. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. I uh, I just really love that disc fill. And same reason that I love the Costello so much. I just love that disc fill. And again, same reason I love the Costellos. It stays a little bit firmer. I've thrown these a good amount. Yes, they're mm-hmm. getting floppy, but they like stay. I don't know if it's slightly more fill or it just it, like, it's just a still. little bit tighter. It's not mm-hmm. so droopy. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I said in my review of these, um, because it, the playability is very similar to a surefire and typhoon. It's going to stick yep. up at the same points. It's going to be good at the same points. The one caveat to that is the feel of the bag. The pro sniper material is smoother and it's, it's less like game changer and rigid material. So in the hand, like it does make a difference and it feels different when you're throwing it. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's kind of going to be its differentiating point is it's very similar to a surefire, but it kind of feels better on one side. It feels smoother. has a more like, you know, I, that, that smoother feel. So depending on how you like your bag, you know, that's where you're going to go for. Again, I said, I love the graphics. I even said in my review, like one reason I throw this bag is just because it looks so cool. And, uh, awesome. and I was talking to some like different smaller bag companies and stuff. We were talking about designs and whatnot. And I was like, 
Man, it, it really matters how good your design is because people will throw the bag if it looks cool. Like that's that's a de- decision factor in throwing Absolutely. it. Is how cool does it look? Absolutely. And and mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, we're not all professionals, so we we're collectors at heart or normal dudes at heart. Or so I mean, cool bags are cool bags. <laughs> like, cool bags are cool bags. Um, if I'm not gonna throw them in the hole, they're gonna look cool doing it. <laughs> yeah, they look good Regardless sitting on the board. Yeah, or the front of it. I was gonna say the front of the board know, is decorated. I knew perfectly. you were. I, knew <laughs> I was you waiting were. for you. But yeah, Whatever. to that to that price point, I mean, it's a new. When I say newer, they've been around for a while, but newer stamped yeah. company that is mm-hmm. now kill shots priced, lucky priced. Um, BG WTF priced. I mean, all that up, yeah. upper echelon of pricing. Where like, and and I'm gr- I'm glad that they're getting the business and it's getting super popular. But like, look at Absolutely. the ambush now. Like, they have them in stock on the website. People aren't as excited for that bag. It's still at that one ten price point. And honestly, I don't think they're going to sell that many of them uh, at yeah. that price point. And you even see people on the Facebook pages now selling those for like ninety bucks because they're like, oh, nobody yep. wants these right now. And I'm like, I just think getting in that upper echelon of price range when this, when the superbly amount of hype dies down for these, that's going to be slightly high. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, on the plus side, they ship out in two days. Like they, they only, they have only yeah. put it up when they have in stock, so you're not waiting. Um, and they're not totally out of the ballpark. They're just a little no, deep, just a know? little high for for a for a new, quote unquote newer. Um, in the space, like company for a stamp bag and stuff. I just think that's a little hot. Yeah. I don't even care about that portion. I just think it's, I think we've kind of hit the limit on what bags are going to go and what people are going to pay. Yeah. I mean, for a standard stock bag, are you going to pay 150 bucks? Just. I'm not. Some people will. And that's what I'm saying. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking smack on either one no. of these, but if you yeah. have, if you have a surefire, like I'm talking literally standard colors, right? Yeah. If you have a standard color surefire and they're trying to charge 140, 150, like you're not going to buy it. No, I buy a typhoon. So, and yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Though. Like, <laughs> yeah. we're, I think we've hit the cap of I pricing agree. as is. So, at this one, 110 price point, you know, 100 bucks, 110 price point, I think that's about as high as it goes. Well, and if you look at prices too, like I know obviously shipping is a huge issue, but cats, when you buy them, are 100 bucks. 100 bucks. You know, and so like obviously everyone talking about the crazy prices. That's 100 bucks shipped. Yeah. And so that's why I'm saying mm-hmm. like, and I think to me personally, like granted, mm-hmm. I get a lot of bags and try a lot of bags. I, d- I don't really feel comfortable paying over a hundred, 120 bucks. I mean, like to me, I'm like, I don't either. I, Absolutely not. I've thrown a ton of bags for 40, $50 that I really enjoy. And I've thrown a lot of $60 yep. bags and $70 bags that are awesome. So yep. like that extra 30, 40 bucks, I'm like, I'm not getting like this material or this bag. That's just so much better than the rest. So I am in agreement with you on the price point thing. And and I and yeah. I don't think any new companies coming in now are, are going to, or I don't think the price will go much higher than it is now. Because eventually it's so just, other companies will come in at that $80 price range and then the big ones will get obsoleted real quick. Or yeah, they're probably higher. close to topped out, I think. Yeah. Um, but those, we digress. Yeah. But those are the two bags. I, on the right side, I like both the bags. I think both the bags, bags. are filling in that Surefire area. I think a lot of companies mm-hmm. are coming out of the bag in that range. Because it's a forgiving, controllable speed with a good push side. Um, but like we said, the shots are blocks and pushes. These bags don't really roll. They're definitely a whole friendly yeah. push bag. They do if they're sticky. Well, yeah. And you throw them like crazy or something. It's super ugly. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. but that kind of leads into shot types. We're going to talk about different types Perfect. of shots today. Perfect. Um, you see it on the TVs. You see them using lingo on the TV. You see them talking about shooting it skinny or shooting it, d- doing a roll or a flop or an airmail. Mm-hmm. I mean, all these different terms. So we're going to kind of go over what they are and kind of w- our opinions on the best bag and player shot type person that uses them and kind of the combos that are the most common that go together. So um, mm-hmm. the first shot we're going to talk about is just your generic slide shot. So a slide shot. You hit the front of the board or the middle of the board, slide into the hole. It's uh, the most common shot that anybody does in backyard, anything. You just slide it into the hole. Pretty simple. That's how you learn to throw. You're shooting a slide. You're trying to land it short, slide it in. That's it. Yep. And and, uh, and even the pros, you slide it in, you know. And then a lot of these shots we're going to talk about are deviations from the slide shot because the slide shot Mm -hmm. is you go in the hole. Everything else is kind of uh, like actually the next one we'll talk about is a block, which a block is preventing your opponent from sliding into the hole. So you want to talk about well, a good and, block? Yeah, of course. And and the block is still 
somewhat of a slide shot, you're just stopping it short. Correct. Um, you know, so a slide shot can be utilized on either slow side or fast side, right? I'm a slow side thrower all day, mm-hmm. but I still slide every back, you know, so you can, you can slide with slow side or fast side blocks. You can also slide with slow side or fast side, but I feel like they're more beneficial on a slow side. Correct. Cause then they're harder to get through. Right. Um, blocks, you can do them with fast bags, but it's very difficult. You want a slower bag, you know, like the slow side of typhoons or, or sure fires or something like that, you know, a four five, six, somewhere in that region, mm-hmm. you know, speed range. I think that's kind of perfect for just a nice little block. And like you said, you're preventing the slide shot. You're making your opponent either shoot over you or shoot around you. Mm-hmm. And if you've never utilized a block shot before, if you play against someone who's not like, I would say the best time to use a block shot is if you're playing against someone who's better than you at a slide shot and you put a block in front of them, it is, unless you practice pushing through a block or going around a block or shooting over a block a lot, it's really mentally demoralizing to shoot it's through in your a head. block. It's so, mm-hmm. it blocks the hole. It's really hard to see through. It's really hard to go around. And you make, your goal is to make your opponent's next shot bit more difficult um and i for any of you guys that watch the tv show you'll hear him talk about a v block and a v block is when the bag sits in front of the hole like this with a v facing towards the players the reason that a v block is so good is because if a bag comes into the bag at anywhere that's not the direct point it will actually ricochet off the bag and miss the hole and now you as a block player just basically made your opponent waste an entire bag and yours is still collectible at some point in the round. So the great part about a block shot is you're basically making your opponent either go through you, around you, or waste a bag, and now you're up a bag, essentially. Mm -hmm. And when you get into upper echelons of play, that just makes it into a chess game. Like, who's going to do what? Are you going to shoot over it, block behind? There's all these different things. Um, Do you Mm want to talk about quick a bully bag? Now that we're talking about blocks? Love to. Uh, You know, now that you bring that up, the the V block, you know, say – V block pushes you out. The V block is almost a bully in itself. It's just mm-hmm. a reverse bully. Correct. Kind <laughs> yeah. of, right. So, you know, bully bag, let's say I have a bag sitting kind of on the right side of the hole. Okay. If I come in at a slight angle over here, I can ricochet off this bag, essentially bullying this bag out of the way. And it puts this bag into the hole. So you made this bag out of play when it was previously collectible by your opponent. Mm-hmm. So a bully bag is, it, it's just a slide shot, but you're taking it, you're taking aim at essentially the side of their bag mm-hmm. instead of into the hole directly. Mm-hmm. So you're just getting them out of play. It's all a chess game. Like you're saying, cornhole is so strategic and there's so many people that do not understand that. Mm-hmm. They're like, Oh, you just shoot four in the hole, right? It's not that hard. Oh, there's so much strategy. Oh, and yeah. I mean, I'm sure most of our viewers agree with that, you know, but when I'm talking with coworkers, friends, whatever that hardly play, I'm like, you there's so much strategy no. to it. You have no idea. Like, and a good bully bag, I mean, like you're saying, it, it's the same purpose as a good block bag. You take one of their mm-hmm. bags completely out of play, totally where now, of play. now you're essentially up two points. If you make the rest of your shots in the hole, the maximum they can get is 10 and you get 12. Mm-hmm. So every you time that you're preventing them from getting a bag they can make later, essentially, if you keep playing perfect, you get two points per advantage that you're you're taking over mm-hmm. them. Um, I would say the block push which we're going to go into next is a very very common play style one that i mostly do i know you did it for a long time you're starting to get into the role that we'll get into but i still do here and there yeah i mean it's still going to be a part of my game regardless because you know i'm not going to roll over my last bag right sure so i'm still going to push it in so a push is just a slide shot that you hit one of your own bags and push both of them into the hole at the same time. So that utilizes, the reason we say a play style is a block push play style is because you throw a block in front of the hole, basically mess with your opponent, and then you throw a fast side, pick up your bag and put them both in the hole, and now you're net Mm -hmm. up two points, essentially. Um, It's a very, more difficult than they make it look on TV because you do have to hit directly into your bag and you can kind of bully Mm -hmm. yourself out of the way. So it is something that takes practice and you generally use the fast side of your bag because it has enough power to push through um, both Mm -hmm. of those bags. Um, You'll also hear on TV them calling it a collect shot or a collection. It's basically like they're throwing a bag to go collect another one and bring it with it into the hole. Um, 
but a very common shot that you'll see, probably one that you've done a million times. Maybe you didn't know the name of it, but very commonly used, especially when you're starting. Uh, yep. This this one I'll let you take, but the flop roll shot. Yeah, I'd, I'm starting to love it. You know, you guys have noticed on my channel, I've started actually to talk positively about carpet, which I know is strange, <laughs> but I just, I hated it for such a long time, but I've realized that, you know, lately I've realized it's benefits and uh, flopping and rolling is a huge benefit. So to me, and we will get into airmail a little later here, but a flop or a roll can be a safer airmail, Agreed. right? When you're shooting for the airmail, if you totally miss, you're typically off the back, right? You totally lost your bag, zero points. If you're shooting for a flop or a roll and you miss, typically stays on the board unless you really wing it. So what a flop or roll is, you essentially have your blocker bag sitting in front of the hole, right? It can be utilized with other materials than carpet, but carpet is the most typical material to utilize it with. You release the bag in such a way that it's either nose up or nose down, depending on how you want to do it. But when it hits the board, it'll hit the blocker, which my hand could be a blocker, hits the blocker and then flops or rolls directly over it into the hole. So it's just, it's a way of release. You know, it's, is it an advanced move? I mean, is that what you'd call it? I mean, that's I mean, an yeah, advanced it's, it's, throwing technique, right? It, maybe I don't have the right necessary, like I don't have a bunch of carpet bags to try it with, but I've practiced mm -hmm. it a lot and it's very different if you've never thrown like the grip is different the throw is different yes. where you land the bag is different it is a yep. more difficult shot to do in my opinion and we haven't gotten into grips and all that but we can yeah. i mean most people know the basics of you know just standard grip or a butterfly grip or whatever mm -hmm. and it's i'm a very standard grip thrower you know i flop the bag a couple times and then i hold it and that's basically my grip right there i mean i don't squeeze too hard i just kind of let it go when i'm throwing a flop or a roll i have to settle beads and then i butterfly it so I pinch it, you see the wings, right? So that's a butterfly. I'm squeezing very hard. And as I release, I'm leaving my palm up to keep the nose of the bag up. So it's it's very difficult to learn that because I've been playing the same way for over a year now, mm -hmm. never throwing different. Yep. And then I'm like, hmm, I want to try this new technique. Well, I have to tweak my throw to do that. This is challenging, um, but it's incredibly useful. If you have a ton of bags stacked up in front of the hole, you can't push through them, you can't slide around them your choices are airmail or a flop well if i miss my flop it's still on mm -hmm. you know and if you hit it it's demoralizing i think it's just totally demoralizing yeah, and not to only my is it not only is it still on the board but we're like most of the time when you miss you miss it doesn't flop enough and it's sitting on top of your opponent's bag yeah. where now they can't push blocker. either yeah uh -huh. like they like you basically and then if they try to airmail, a lot of the time, if they miss a little short, they pull yours in because you're sitting on top of their bag. So absolutely, it, it kind of like when you're at a disadvantage, almost like completely flips the advantage, even if you miss. Uh, it can. Which is why it can be so powerful. Um, it really can. Yeah. It's a great shot. I mean, it's it takes a lot of practice. You know, people are asking me, man, how are you starting to get that? Like hours a day. So I'm starting to get that. And when I set up two bags. I walk down, I throw them. I and we talked about yeah, this. Why, I don't know why you don't set up two bags on each side and then you can walk back and forth and you don't have to walk back so much. But Because my brain's not as I, big as I, yours. I, just, I mean, we went over this and I, I know I'm, it's bigger brain. It's okay. Uh, but yeah, I know you said uh, how to throw it is point down or point up. I know I've talked to a lot of different people about flop and you throw yours point up. The reason for that being yep. it hits on its butt basically slaps down on the board and that triggers exactly. the rolling. And there are some people that throw front down and basically what they're doing is they're landing it right before the bags, pinning the front under the bags and that triggers the roll. So yep. trying both, I would say the front down has a larger margin of error because you have to throw it a little harder right into the bags to flip it when front and up. And you, you might, mean, sorry, you might push them right in. Yeah, exactly. It, and that's, that's what you that's end up doing. That's my problem with yeah. the front down. You might just hit their bag, push them right in and then you're still stopped below the hole. Yep. And you're like, well. That yeah. stinks, you know, and that's the front up front down is that's specifically for flops uh, roll. The bag is typically yes. tilted on end, but it's the same idea. It's still going to be front up or front down because you need to fling those beads yep. as soon as it hits the board. You know, the friction is there. It hits and the momentum takes the beads forward. And that's what makes it do what it does. And talking about the word friction, that's why carpet is mostly the bag that does it, you know, um, and, and 
you can do it with some when it starts to get sticky with stickier materials. You need enough friction with the board that catches to trigger that flipping action. If it's too fast, Absolutely. like uh, if it's too fast with like a faster bag, it literally just hits and starts sliding immediately. Slide. And it gets no friction. Mm-hmm. So you have mm-hmm. to have that friction, which is why carpet's the main bag that does it. Um, kind of yep. in the same vein as a flop shot is a cut shot. Um, and a cut shot, I know you see Eric Davis on ACL really doing like ridiculous cut so shots, like, so good. like scary level of cut shots. I watched one clip mm-hmm. where he, he like cut it so much that like his opponent just stopped and like looked at him. Like, why did you even I aim did for see that? that one? Like, he totally whipped around. Oh, like three bags. Like, ridiculous. How? And, well, mm-hmm. I guess I should explain what a cut shot is first, but a cut shot is basically if I'm standing on the left side of the board and you have a bag on the left side of the hole blocking me from just pushing straight in, I would throw it on axis. Basically it's tilted one direction where it lands on the board on the right side and then diagonally diagonally slides up Mm -hmm. to the left, basically cutting or opposite direction of what your normal throw would be around that bag. Um, That's all done from, you know, wrist angle and getting the bag on an axis at release. It slaps down in the board and then changes the direction of momentum directly at the hole. Um, With again, you kind of need bags that have friction. You can do it with slightly faster bags. It's more of like a little baby cut. Um, you can just because you're just changing a little momentum, but it's not going to be this crazy. I mean, I know with carpet bags, sometimes they just do ridiculous things. They just cut in like ways they should not cut. Like, uh, like and sometimes to the detriment. But it, that's why mastering carpet can be so beneficial because it can just move exactly. in ways that other bags cannot move. Um, exactly. It's another way to get around. Like I said, a way to get around a blocker. Um, that you can't get through normally. Um, and that's why we're talking about Eric Davis. He basically threw a, the bag was three quarters away in the hole on his side. And he basically threw it around the back on the opposite side, something ridiculous that a normal it person was ridiculous. wouldn't even think would be possible. And somehow these, some of these pro players and are just utilizing shots that like, even the commentators were like, I don't even think that's humanly possible to do. And they just do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, again, yep. slow, normally a slower board, slower bag is the big cut shots you're going to see. But even Damon Dennis, who's a all uh, game changer thrower, is starting to learn a little baby cut shot. So you can do it with those faster bags. Just a little one. Just a little one. But just a little one. Even a little no, of that I, I direction can be like the opposite helps, of though. bullying a different bag in the other direction. You know, it's so just it a can slightly help. different angle. Mm-hmm. That is it. I mean, it's I've started throwing a little bit of a cut, and funny enough, it's the exact same release as my flop. Oh, but it's in a situation. Yeah, I know it's strange. It just because my flop throw is so ugly. Okay. That's part of what helps. Sure. <laughs> it's I mean, but I'm doing it intentionally. You know, it's I had a guy, it was super, super dewy out. You know, you could see dew on the boards at a blind draw last week. And he was sitting just on the left side of the he was on the left side of the hole, and I was throwing from the left side of the board. So he's right in my lane, right? I'm like, I'll just try to flop over it, flop around it, and I kind of missed to the right, but it ended up going. Do, do, do. Yep. And just fell in left. And I was like, okay, that works. Let's try it again. And it's just, if I didn't land just before his bag to flop over it, if I landed a little deeper, the bag still did what I wanted to and mm-hmm. went right around his bag instead. And he's just looking at me like, really, dude? I'm like, <laughs> I've definitely done it accidentally, okay. like oh, when yeah. it gets sticky, but I have not gotten to the point yet where I can do it consistently on purpose. Oh, but- I'm not consistent. <laughs> I just got lucky. But it was three lucky times in a row. So that's always something, right? <laughs> So then he thought you were consistent and you, you built it into he his brain awesome. that, hey, don't mm-hmm. block me because, you know, I don't got these shots, anymore. man. <laughs> if you want to beat me, just slide into the hole because I don't do that. So, And then we have a, probably the most flashy shot, I would say. The one that, like, catches the most attention be. is the airmail. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, and the airmail, for anyone who doesn't know, but uh, it's when you throw the bag and it goes directly in the hole and doesn't touch the board. I mean, it touches the board maybe a little bit, but you just throw it and it goes in the hole. Um, the reason it's so good is the, everything we've been talking about so far, if you're blocked, you could throw it over the bag into the hole. If you Mm -hmm. know, if you have bags sitting on the hole, which is what we'll call a drag shot, you can throw it and then hit that bag with the downward momentum where it actually pulls that bag into the hole. So you're dragging another bag with you, which airmail is the only shot that can have enough power to drag a bag in and you can drag it off that's, a very that's small. That's not true. Oh. I dragged a flop the other day. Okay. Well, <laughs> I said if, that if you me. have, if you have a teeny bit of material, you're flopping. I no, I don't. There. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And there's, there's no better feeling than a good airmail drag. Oh, I mean, no. you got, 
you got two corners hanging in and you hit a double oh, drag. It's the I mean, best. you can, if you don't fist bump that, you're not, you're not human. I mean, but you don't like, just, it, if, if yeah, you don't even like cornhole bump, that much yeah, or yeah. you have zero motion. You're just like, it's what I do. <laughs> Trey Birchfield, like, full robot just, it. <laughs> full, but, but yeah, I mean, it's the airmail. It is, it's incredibly flashy. I mean, there's, there's nothing better than your opponent lays a block. You shoot an airmail right over them, sink it. And they're just like, Oh, he's yeah, not right away around. to start the round. You just no hesitation. Oh, air yeah. Mail. <laughs> no hesitation. Launch it. And uh, it's like, wow, this guy isn't messing around. I don't want to block him anymore. It's yeah, another huge strategy mental game. game. It's all mental. Mm -hmm. yep. Chess, not checkers, man. I'm Correct. telling you, it is a chess game. But I know there is one other shot with an air that you can only do with an airmail two, which is called an and one, which is when the bag, if your opponent has a bag sitting behind the hole, like on the top of the board, they just have a single point. You throw an airmail. And you hit their bag, knock their bag off the back, and yours comes back into the hole. Which normally you can't try to do it if you're not a pro. But if you do it, it's one of the coolest things ever. Oh, you can try. Yeah, okay, you can try. <laughs> but I know there's a I've couple tried many, many times. <laughs> there's a couple pro moments I've seen of people doing it, and it's just like oh, it's, it's just nasty. so cool. Like and uh, and it's just I mean it's just again with the mental game it's so demoralizing when your opponent not oh, it's only a slap just in the face. air mails but they just launch your bag off the back <laughs> it's total like, slap <laughs> in the face they just and one you and you're like oh no like here we go I would That's, say so almost I mean every bag can air mail obviously if you have a bag you have to be able to air mail it do you find that course. like the faster floppier bags are easier to air mail or do you think it's all personal preference yeah so I'm I'm a little torn on that. I honestly am. I I always throw slow side down on my airmails. Oh, interesting. I'm the opposite. I do. Um, unless I'm trying to go clean. Okay. If I have to go clean because the opponent's starting to sink in or something like that, and I have to go like deep clean, I will flip to fast side because I, if I touch their bag, I want the least amount of friction possible on their bag. So that's why I do that. It's not very often that that does happen, but I am a slow side down air mailer because if i miss just enough sometimes it keeps that bag on the board mm -hmm. you are fast side air mailer well my mentality know, is which, that like when i hit i've had some where i hit the hole that i feel like it, it like slides in the hole a little easier if i'm slightly off than the slow side does yeah. or the slow side could sometimes catch and hang on for me or something. I, I don't know. I, I think, I mean, if you're a good air mailer, I don't think it matters what side you use. It doesn't. If you're a bad air mailer, just use the side that I guess makes more sense to you. I, I'm in agreement well, with you that the slow side might stick more. I'm in the, I'm like, uh, the fast side will go in easier. You know, it's kind of. But there are the, bags that will, there's bags that air mail better. I mean, on mm -hmm. carpet is not that great for air mailing. I mean, because it's typically not that floppy. Um, it has less forgiveness when you hit the hole, you know. If say on a deadhead or something, you need half the bag to hit the lip of the hole to be able to go in with carpet. You might need three quarters of it sure. just because it's more full. It's just not more the bouncy. same forgiveness. In the, and exactly. Yeah. It might want to bounce off instead of just hitting and fall in. Sure. I've noticed that game changers, game changer studies, you know, 2.0s, whatever. I am the worst at airmailing those. And I it's something to do with that like patch. That. Yeah. And it's like the patch will hit and those bags just launch. I'm yeah. like, holy crap, that actually went off the right side of the board. <laughs> yeah, they like swoop After out. After it almost. hit the hole and they yeah. launch, dude. And it's, I mean, I've had it happen with Costellos and stuff. It happened to me last night, actually. And it's, it wasn't a problem. It stayed on the board, but it's just that friction gets you sometimes, you know. But yeah, there's certain bags that are definitely, they're going to lend to a better airmail. If I'm called up to the airmail pot, you know, I'm shooting something more friendly. I'm going to shoot Costellos, Pro yeah. Snipers. Uh, you know, I don't throw vipers, but tangos actually are one of my favorite airmail bags, which mm. I know sounds silly because it's carpet, but it's an incredibly friendly carpet. Mm. So I just really like shooting those for airmails. But so we do have uh, than others. We do have one more shot. We'll call it a bonus shot. Um, it's the hardest. Ooh, bonus shot. It's the hardest I shot. About the bonus shot. Yeah, it's the hardest shot to do in cornhole. Everyone would agree. Uh, it's the front board. So that's Ooh. where that's where you <laughs> miss the bag on the front of the board perfectly enough where you just you move the board <laughs> out of the way and then you have to fix it the next time you go down there because you just whack it so yeah. hard um it's really yeah. difficult to master it's like hitting a bar down in soccer you know you got to hit it perfect um dude it's tough only the best pros can really do it i know corbin you've been practicing a lot uh in your videos dude. you really you really show off that well i would say watch my costello um, <laughs> video and i will show you how that's why they're I his favorite bag because he can just consistently right. front board them proof right there um, front board no it's oh man it's the worst. <laughs> I, seriously 
it's so it, demoralizing for yourself when you're front board because i'm like oh, how no, was i so just, far off man like that's like you're doing feet. it to yourself it's like a two foot miss <laughs> when I'm, I'm throwing last night you know we're at this big blind draw i was telling you about it you know lots of pros there was 44 people there i mean huge huge thing for this blind draw man i'm throwing like one of my buddies like Hey, you didn't even front board that game. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> doing the videos like, on, bro. You I get a little tighter, you. okay? Like, it's, it's yeah, different. in the videos, I mean, I'm always doing it, of course, you know. But apparently around here, another friend told me last night that they were throwing and somebody front boarded. And they were like, oh, you just Corbin. And then oh, no. every front board for the rest oh, no. of the night, they just yelled Corbin. Oh, so I'm like, no. all right, well. Hey, all publicity is good publicity, right? I uh, true. I mean, I mean, I would say the Deadhead review that I just released, like I didn't front board and I had an airmail drag. So I'm like, I must be just shooting out of my mind or something. Ooh. Like this is no front boards. Like, wow. This is oh, pretty insane. How much editing did you do? Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> Any of you guys <laughs> want to try these videos, record an intro and then go directly into throwing no cuts and do not mm-hmm. front board one time and don't miss off the back three times every round. It's way harder right. than you think it'd be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I love it. Um, no, I mean, the front board is just, it is what it is. And that's why my logo has a front board bag on it. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's kind of my calling card. It's what I do. And I have fun with it. You know, it's, if I miss one on the front, so be it. It's, I'd rather launch it off the back and give myself a chance. I'll tell but, you what, Peanut has been watching your videos because she did not front board. She actually did. Well, well, she gave the second one some juice then. She, the first one had the juice. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm saying. She, oh, the okay. Second one, well, it might have been something like that. She I was laughing so hard cause... after the first one that you know oh, I, I don't was know. If dying, I... <laughs> dude. I was cracking up so bad, man. I was. That's why I kept the video rolling. I'm like, oh, so I don't good. care if I have to hold my phone the rest of this time. That is hilarious. And and I mean that goes to show you, like anybody listening to this, like we're just two normal guys that enjoys a, a game and we play a game and we like talking about a game. Yep. Like we have, yep. we have we're nothing special, but we just talk and try a lot of bags <laughs> basically oh so many bags too, too many too many so <laughs> my, many bags. no my, such thing as too many but i don't know i'm gonna need a bin soon at this point um well no i'm not saying own all of them i'm just there's no such oh, thing as trying, trying too many bags agree, agree. you know I, try I as many as you can um well why don't we i think we're going pretty long here today but we'll t- uh in conclusion i mean thanks guys for stopping by i mean uh i think the deadheads and the typhoons they're hot for a reason they're a really good bag um the Great price bags. point on the typhoons is the main reason that i have them and tried them and and i think it's going to be a big reason why other people do and uh mm-hmm. the deadheads look sick <laughs> so if you can get your hand on a pair you'll like them they absolutely do <laughs> like, they're, they're awesome but uh if you can try to use any of these shots in your game i think all of these shots are usable and very good to have in your arsenal and gives you good practice things to work on you know everyone's got something else they can get better at i know i do i know you do um and, absolutely. and it and it'll help you out no matter what situations you get in so uh um, make sure you check out you know my, i got a review of the typhoon and the deadhead on cornhole bag reviews i know you have you'll have reviews coming out on them as well in i the will future. have them coming up yep and, i'm gonna uh, have a gonna have a pretty big one coming up here shortly with maybe those two included with some others sure so, so uh stay tuned for those and uh appreciate you guys stopping by for another episode um we'll catch you guys in the next one and have a good one thanks thanks guys